Hi guys, so I'm very, very excited. I've been invited to a place called Tinker's Bubble, which is basically a woodland community who try to live in a way that uses no fossil fuels, very, very sustainably, um, and does loads and loads of the things that I aspire to and that I talk about. So I've very, very kindly and generously been invited to meet someone here to record a podcast and have a look around. So uh, yeah, I'm really excited. What a great day. We're going to have a look around at some of the things they do. They manage, I think, about 27 acres of woodland, but obviously we'll talk about that with Alex, who's going to meet me shortly. They've got a steam engine that they use to power their sawmill and they just, you know, live off the land. So we're going to be uh, spending a little time here. So I've, I've walked around and recorded a podcast while we've, while we've gone. This is Alex. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we've just met, did you say Jim? Jim. Jim. And uh, she is rather rambunctious. And very keen to nuzzle me and say hello. These are working horses. So behind me is, I think about 27 acres. Is that right? That you manage? Yes. Yeah, of mostly Douglas fir and... These guys, they pull the trees when they're, when they're felled, they pull them down to the sawmill, which we'll see on the way out. So Tinker's Bubble is basically a, a woodland community that try to live as sustainably as possible. And one of the key tenants of that is that there's no fossil fuels used here at all. All the the power generated for the sawmill and everything else is done by a steam engine, which is currently in a poor state of repair. And I'll talk to you a bit more about that later, but um, we're going to walk back out now and uh, I'll share a little bit of it with you on our way. I just feel so privileged to have been invited here because it's not something that everyone gets to do. They do. You have open days sometimes, don't you, Alex? Yeah, there's one day a year that the public can come to, normally in September. Yeah, so... Um, but outside that, it's not something that uh, it's not something that's a given, you know, that I was just able to come here. So I genuinely appreciate the, the time I've been given and the access. So behind us here, we've got um, where those horses were. We've got a big apple orchard and there's two kind of, for want of a better word, income streams here. The income is only derived by way of basically meeting a gap between what is necessary to be consumed and what, and what they can produce so they kind of swap some apple juice and apple cider and some timber for the shortfall in things like spices and grains and all that kind of thing and uh yeah i've just had a great tour around we've got all sorts going on there's some amazing facilities here and it's all very very stripped back and in tune with nature and uh it's just been a, it's just been a fantastically humbling experience. I think the time of year doesn't hurt because it's very easy to, to. I suppose if it was the middle of summer and the sun was pouring down, it's easy to feel like you're on holiday when you come to visit places. But there's very much a sense of being at one with what's going on around me. You don't get to shut down, you know. So we're walking through the woodland here, and this stream comes from a spring, which is just a few meters uphill. And this is the water source. This is where all the water comes from for Tinker's Bubble. So there's a community here. There's around eight adults at the moment, and three children, but that kind of ebbs and flows. The people come and go. And at the moment, that's the numbers, but this spring supports the community here all year round. And how do you actually access it? As in the water, how do you harvest it? Do you... So we've got a ram pump, which is a, a pump that runs on the pressure of the water itself. So it doesn't need extra power. And that pumps water up the hill to some storage by the buildings and from there it goes to the kitchen and to the gardens and to the animals. Awesome. Uh, do, you, do, you have, do you use the stream for turbines? No, the power all comes from solar power and there's one small wind turbine but it's mostly photovoltaics. So. Okay. And as I'm walking around I'm just, uh, I'm just seeing, you know, old crafts and things that are alive and well. Got some hedge laying here. And, you know, whether it's foraging, there's a group out foraging as we speak, going out for wild garlic, whether it's foraging, whether it's forestry, all of these things are being done with 
really traditional methods. And Alex said that, you know, that's one of the big draws here is that kind of, that thread that goes back through time. And here we are in 2021 and maintaining and learning these crafts as we go. And I bet Alex, I bet you were, I bet you've hardly been affected by the pandemic and the lockdown or anything else here. We don't really notice it here because we've got a community that, that gets on with things. You know, we're on the land, we're with each other. Yeah, you didn't need to worry about the supermarket shelves emptying. <laughs> no, and I, don't, I forget that there's these things that are affecting people's lives so much because it doesn't really, you know, most of our day to day, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose part of that is the, the decisions that we've made around being on the land and, and living this lifestyle. A lot of people are starting to see the imperative of that now with the systems that we're used to depending on feeling the strain and, and breaking and yep. places. And so we have to relearn what systems it's healthy for us to engage with and, and where those, um, those dependencies and maybe there's, there's instability in them. Yeah. Now the plum and cherry are in blossom this week. Mm. And you've got a fair bit of hazel. Do you coppice the hazel? In places, yeah. And here we've got another another orchard. Apple orchard. So how do you like <laughs> it's gonna sound silly, but how do you sort of maintain the skills insofar as, you know, because the group is so fluid, uh, there must there must be, or there must have been a point in time, or there must or there must be plans for a point in time when the group dynamics change such that a certain time of year comes round and no one is there with the experience for a certain type of job. How are you? How do you manage that? Well, then we do the job and we learn by doing it. And, Perfect. And sometimes <laughs> we learn by getting it wrong or, or not doing it perfectly. Um, yeah, I'm, this is my first growing season here and only my second growing season anywhere. And, and I'm learning by being in the folly tunnel and yeah. talking to people and reading books and, and learning by necessity. Perfect. So we're just going to quickly pop up and I'd like to show you the, um, so we, we're not going to go filming inside people's homes, but I will just show you the, uh, the sort of the communal area where the kitchen is. And I think it's kind of it, outside the workstation. So we've got at the bottom of the hill below us here is kind of like the the workstation. Does that sound right? Yeah, you know, yeah, sort of the, the production hub where the there you go. And the, the production hub, is. much better than a workstation. <laughs> so it's, it's got the uh, it's got There's the still funny words to be using here where it all feels yeah you know, much more slapdash than that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, you know it's got the the lumber mill and it's got the apple press and things like that. And then up the hill where we're headed, just briefly, and look at all these primroses look. So beautiful here. And, and I haven't heard a car since I've been here, I don't think. And up the hill here, we've got the home part, if you like. And there's eight small houses, most of them one room, and a nice sort of communal area, including a nice big kitchen, which I'd like to just show you. I think uh, it's just really impressive. And it, it the t between the two, between the sort of the manufacturing part and this kitchen part, I think it kind of sums up the vibe of the place quite nicely. Would you agree, Alex? Because you, <laughs> you're, you're obviously more, more versed in what the vibe of the place is. <laughs> yeah, it's quite something to see when people first walk through the little village we have and really struck by the aesthetic of it because it's not something we see in, in the UK. This no. quality of living in the landscape like we have here using wood that's come from the land here as well um, but then it just becomes part of our normality and in a way we stop noticing it because it's yeah. where we live and again all the structures here they're all built with most well they're all built with sustainable resources but most of them are actually built from sustainable resources that are grown and manufactured here specifically the timber yeah, and the, the main structures are, are timber, but we also, we do use plastic tarps and big paint windows and, you know, secondhand sofas and so... Yeah, yeah. There's, there's living, as part of what we do is, is benefiting from modern technology, but in a way that we hope is, is kind of aligned with our ethics. 
and you definitely keep fit if you're walking up this uh, <laughs> this little hill a couple of times a day. I think that would do you. Uh, so we came up over there before, didn't we? So animals, we haven't really mentioned animals outside the, did you keep any animals other than cows, goats and the horses? We've got chickens for eggs. We had two pigs over the summer that we slaughtered on site maybe a month or so ago. Um, and three cats and a dog. I did the same thing this year. I slaughtered my first pig and ah. butchered it on site. So this here is the communal kitchen area. And Alex was saying that, you know, the outside, you know, this space is really your house if you're living this way. And, you know, that really does hit home to you when you see that this is, I suppose, one of the, <laughs> this is the equivalent to our, to your lounge in your house, particularly when it's not raining. Is this, is this where most people would commune at night? Yeah, we eat around here together as a community twice a day uh, and play music together and hang out together sometimes. Awesome. And then there's the communal kitchen area back there. And as you can see, I love these pots and pans. There's no need to have them in the house, is there? So why build a bigger house just to have your pots and pans in? And um, you can see just down here is sort of some of the village and the, in America, you'd call them tiny houses. I don't think we really have a name for them other than they are just small houses. We're just coming down to the goats now, and that's made me happy because I love goats. Are they? Are we in with the goats as we speak? Yeah, they Isn't have the roam of the woodland over the winter wow. period. They'll be on the pasture at some point soon because they're starting to eat the food a bit. But they've got quite a good life here having the roam of the woodland. Yeah, haven't they just? That's what our pigs have. Not as big a woodland as you, but oh wow! And do they become a bit feral? Oh, no, they're very friendly, so they've spent lunch bothering us all day, trying to beg food off us and climb on the tables and things like that. Um, but they have their circuit, you see, every day they tend to go around the same sort of loop in the woods and browse the brambles back. And what do you keep the goats for? Milk and pleasure, I suppose. They're, they're such lovely animals, they've got their personality. Yeah, yeah. And when the kids come along in a few months as well. Uh... So with the, with the goats and the cows, how come you're not making milk 12 months of the year? Well, the goats are only in milk, I guess, nine months of the year or so. And the cows, it's good to rest them for a bit. So, but I, I, what I meant was uh, you could sort of structure it so that you were, oh, I so see. That you were staggered, staggered milkings. Um, yeah, that would require planning. <laughs> Fine. It was a kind of organic Understood. following of, of how things are. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, guys. You look like Fern. This one looks like my girl, don't you? Only a little bit prettier because you're not as raggedy. You were lovely. You were all lovely. Do love a goat. Uh, we're going through here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so we're headed back now, back towards my car, back towards the end of my lovely trip, my amazing visit, but also back towards the sawmill so i will definitely show you that and again you know it's one of the working hubs and here we are down at the bottom behind me there is the the big sort of cider press building and then in here is the timber mill so this is where a lot of the machining happens and of course over there is the steam engine which is currently in need of repair so there's currently a, a crowdfunder to try and repair their steam engine because it's been broken for a little while and I think the costs are about £12,000 to get it repaired. And if you go on the Tinker's Bubble website, well, in fact, here's Alex, he might want to say it. <laughs> so there's a, my, where I parked, I blocked the gate, so I had to go and move my vehicle to let someone else out. And then in their attempt to get out, they've kind of, stranded their car on, a, on a, a weird bank. So we're all at sixes and sevens trying to help them out. But Alex has just popped back over to talk quickly about the steam engine. So I was just explaining that it's in need of repair. Perhaps you want to take it from there. Yeah, so the steam engine runs off offcuts from the sawmill and provides all the power for the bench. Uh, but it's 
undergoing a, its first major overhaul in its 80 years of service, which is requiring about £12,000 and a, a specialist contractor who's refitting out the firebox and boiler. Um, and so, yeah, we're raising money to, to try and get that project complete. So if you wanted to help out with that, you can go on the Tinker's Bubble website and there is a link there to a crowdsourcing application where you can help out if that is your bent. But obviously, £12,000 to some, to some of us and to some organisations might not seem like a lot of money, but when you're trying to live in a sustainable way and you're not really plugged in to commerce, full stop, beyond very simply trying to meet your needs, £12,000 is, is basically insurmountable insofar as the way you're trying to live. So, you know, you could make a huge difference to this community, which is trying to live in a sustainable fashion. Did I got all that right? Yeah. Nothing in there that uh, no, I should that's redact? Good. Great. Okay. Well, thank you ever so much, Alex, for your time. I genuinely appreciate it. It's been a real privilege. Yeah, pleasure. And uh, hopefully we'll stay in touch. Yeah. Great.